Welcome to the fifth and final podcast of Baba Yaga. Please stay tuned after the end to hear the epilogue. And now, the final episode of Baba Yaga, Coming Home. Baba Yaga, Podcast 5. Forest. Day. V walks through the forest. Leaves of different color and shape circle in and around her thick red hair. Bundles of herbs fill her apron pockets. As she walks, she puts a few small leaves in and around the doll's head and apron. Ever so slightly, the trees bow as she passes. Talking to the doll. I love trees. During a game of hide-and-seek, I hid inside a tree. (laughs) Mother told me I hid so well it took most of the day to find me. You know, I was never scared. I felt safe. I could have stayed there. V stops. At the foot of the hillside, a circle of old oak trees blocks the path. In the center of the circle is an old hut. Fallen oak leaves cover the ground. The doll in V's hand starts to shake. V stuffs the doll into her pocket. She looks around. I've never seen this hut before. I've walked this path enough times to know this is not here. V crosses into the circle of oaks. She slowly walks to the hut. Finding a crack in the wall, she looks inside. Hello. The wind begins to rustle the leaves. Sounds of chains clang together. Bottles smashing. Sinister laughter and muffled screams can be heard inside the hut. Hello. Mother? Mother, is that you? Mother! V and the hut are lifted off the ground, spinning in a whirl of wind and leaves. V screams her mother's name. A moment later, the hut, wind, and leaves drop to the ground. V falls in a heap, sobbing. The doll is thrown outside the circle of oaks. Mother! V runs back to the hut. The leaves swirl around her feet. The hut vanishes. Erebus appears in its place. He catches her. There, there, child. Oh, what a shock. To be reunited with your dear mother, only to witness the horror of her death. V pulls away from Erebus's grip. (sighs) That is not the way my mother died. Ah, Are you sure, child? You weren't there. She was very ill. She went to my grandmother's. She died in her sleep. Hmm. But then what did you just see? That was not my mother. Interesting. You have the talent of sight, child. A very rare talent indeed. I know of only one who had the sight. I've seen you in the village... Your stepmother's been worried sick about you, so I promised I would get you and bring you home safe. My stepmother, Vilia? Yes. Now everyone knows what happens to those who cross paths with Baba Yaga. She's been worried sick. Inching further away, V reaches into her pocket for the doll. How is my family? Worried, as I said, but fine. My stepsisters and stepbrother? Yes, child, I just said they were well. Now, let's get you home so you can see for yourself. We can talk about your mother's death along the way. You really should know the truth. My name is V, and I don't have a stepbrother. Leaves rustle around V's feet. V, of course. Father Vasily at your service. (laughs) I must have misunderstood. How did you know my mother? I've never heard of you. I was head of a different cloister, close to your grandmother. 
Uh, when I heard her daughter was dying, I went to see if there was anything I could do. I was told that Baba Yaga had come and taken your mother away to... to cure her, I believe. But apparently, she took your mother deep into the forest and left her to die. That's not true. It can't be true. Oh, I assure you it is. Baba Yaga left your mother alone and defenseless. Those men found her and, well, I'm sorry you had to see that, but well, she died during an unfortunate attack. The light changes as heavy gray clouds form overhead. Unfortunate attack? That was no unfortunate attack. That was... That was inhuman. That was... Baba Yaga hated your grandmother and her offspring. She was terribly jealous. Her mother loved your grandmother. But honestly, who could love Baba Yaga? You've seen the way she is. Baba Yaga would never have done that. Has she told you what happened? No, not yet. But she is going to. She went to meet with my grandmother. Oh, <laughs> my, but you are too trusting. She killed your mother and now she's gone to find your grandmother? Oh, really, child? You know what Baba Yaga is capable of. No, it's not true. You're lying. Puffs of air push V about. The leaves pick up speed around her feet. Ghostly shapes pass in and out of the oak trees. Rain slowly falls inside the circle. Ah. Did she mention how your grandfather died? Uh, you have the gift of sight. Shall I help you to see what your great-aunt did to him? My great-aunt? Erebus laughs. V's agitation grows. She rubs her forehead. As she does this, the rain stops and moves up toward the sky. Ha! Ah, the ignorance. You don't know that Baba Yaga is your great-aunt. Your grandmother and Baba Yaga share the same mother. Your grandmother got all the affection while Baba Yaga was shoved out, forced to make potions and tinctures to sell and... Uh, worse, I heard. Having nothing and no one else, she grew to be unusually powerful. You, you will be her next victim. Didn't you wonder how Preben was able to find you? No one else knew where you were. How could you know about that? As V's agitation grows, the leaves from the oak trees start to vibrate. The branches start to slowly pulse up and down. Olgar steps into the circle of oaks. Yes, that's a good question. Well, well. Find a cure after all, hmm? You're the blacksmith from the village. How is it you are here? I heard you were blind. Ignoring V, Olgar and Erebus eye one another carefully. Olgar moves to shield V from Erebus. How did I miss that? Perhaps you've been a little too busy killing the innocent. <laughs> uh, guess I won't be getting any more chain for the pillory. Eh? I'll just have to stick to fire. V, meet Erebus, the cruel. In the village, he masquerades as Father Vasily. He is no friend to you or anyone in your family. Your blood family. He wants your death, so all your gifts pass to him. I'm sure he's been testing to see what those gifts are. The trees pulse and vibrate with energy. The air around V shimmers slightly. The leaves at her feet stop rustling. Erebus and Olgar square off. Ignore him, V. He's lying to you. So... To Olgar. You are not the person I've heard about. To Erebus. And I've never met you, but you seem to know an awful lot about me. Yes, well, 
Seems you've been living in a fairy tale your whole life. And it's time to wake up, little girl. The oak branches knit together, tightening the circle around V, Erebus, and Olgar. The roots of the oaks rise to ground level. They inch closer to Erebus. I'm not a little girl. I'm all grown up. I've been learning from Baba Yaga. She's a remarkably good teacher. It won't matter now. Erebus sends a bolt of energy toward V. Olgar blocks it, and the two engage in a battle of energy and bolts of fire. Olgar sends energy to V that pushes her toward one of the oaks out of the line of fire. Not this time! She pulls away from the oak. V, no! Olgar sends energy, pinning her to the oak again. This time, V presses herself into the tree. The limbs begin to move as her arms. With one swoop, she knocks Erebus to the ground. Dazed for a second, Erebus retaliates. Together, V and Olgar use all their combined energy against Erebus. The branches of three oak trees pin Erebus to the ground. He can barely move. Covering him with roots and limbs, Erebus struggles, but he cannot free himself. Released from her oak, V moves to Erebus. She walks around him as she speaks. Ah, I'm tired of being pushed aside. I wanted to be at my mother's side when she was dying. I wanted to travel with my father for his work because herbs were my interest. I didn't want to be a slave to my stepmother and her two bratty daughters, and I sure didn't want to go into the forest to find Baba Yaga. But now that I have, I see that I do have abilities that can benefit others. I don't have to believe, listen, or respond to anyone else's demands unless I choose to. Oh, bravo! <laughs> well, if we're speaking honestly, then let me tell you what you are going to give me. I have far better use for your talents. What are you going to do with them? Make pretty little daisy chains? Leave her be. Why is it that you just can't let women like V and the women in her family be? What gives you the right to take whatever you want? Because I can! You're useless to me. I just want the girl! Erebus struggles to move as the chain Baba Yaga used on his body resurfaces. He is chained to the oak, and escape is impossible. Hmm. Foxglove and poison parsley, I think, will do nicely. You see, I love to read, and there's so much to learn. Olgar smiles. He bows slightly to V. The oaks bow as well. V takes this in as she crosses outside the circle. Olgar waves his hand toward the sky, and the rain stops. The clouds dissolve. V picks up the doll and puts it in her pocket. She returns with two plants wrapped in her apron. V, you are at the beginning of your life. I am not. Taking a life is not without consequence. It grieves me to say you will have more opportunities in the future. Erebus the Cruel might just be the beginning. Even though we are different in all ways, he is still my kind. V cocks her head to one side as she regards Olgar. She opens her apron. Olgar waves his hands over the foxglove and poison parsley. The herbs move through the air. Erebus screams in agony as the herbs burn into his face and eyes. Once he is dead, his body dissolves into the oak. V bows slightly to the circle of oaks. Olgar and V walk out of the circle. Baba Yaga won't know what happened here. Erebus wasn't just cruel, he was also very accomplished. I'm grateful I was close enough to see the oaks rise out of the ground, or I might not have found you. If you possessed any knowledge he wanted, he would destroy you. I lost my father to him years ago. Arriving at the foot of the hillside, V turns to Olgar. I'm sorry. Thank you for finding me. For helping me. Before you arrived, I saw a woman in a hut. She was... Yes. That was not your mother. That was Baba Yaga, when she was a little older than you. Oh. 
No, I didn't know. So horrible. There's one last part you should see. I cannot lead, but you can. Take my hands. You need to know the whole story. Inside the blacksmith's shop, night. Baba Yaga, 20 winters, stands in the doorway. She tries to focus her swollen eyes. She bleeds from every open wound. Baba Yaga pulls the hood of Myrna's cloak over her face with her head tilted down. Olgar's back is turned to her. She watches him for a moment. He stops and turns toward the doorway. Who's there? It's a bit early to commission work. Baba Yaga leans close to the wall for support. Her voice is barely audible. I... I have chains. Remove. Oh, come here, child. I need to touch the metal. It's all right. Cautiously, Baba Yaga moves to him, trying to keep her face hidden. She extends her arms and leg. The chain is embedded in her arms. Do you know where it was forged? As he touches the metal, Olgar looks up with surprise. Baba Yaga sees his cloud-covered eyes. Why, this is my iron, child. How did you come to wear these chains? Baba Yaga pushes back her hood and speaks. Can you remove them? Yes, I can, but I do not understand. How can you be wearing these chains? I made these a long time ago for... For a woman in the forest, far from here. She said it was for a particularly difficult animal. As Baba Yaga closes her eyes, Olgar's eyes clear. He can see her fully. Sit. Sit down, child. No harm will come to you here. Water? Do you want some water? Olgar's eyes cloud over again. Baba Yaga folds down to the floor on her knees. She struggles to stay alert. A key? Do you have a key? Baba Yaga beats the ground with the chain. Olgar. My name is Olgar. And yes, of course, just a moment. Now! The air around Olgar warps and shakes. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. It's here. He fumbles with the keys looped to his apron. Ah, here it is. I thought, if ever it was needed, hold steady. Baba Yaga does her best to hold still. Olgar works the locks. They are rusted and not easy to open. Do you know Myrna? Lovely woman. Voice of an angel. Baba Yaga closes her eyes. Yes. Yes, it took quite a bit of work to get her voice that soft. Olgar pauses for a moment, keeping his eyes in the direction of the lock. A bit of work? The locks open. He pulls them away as carefully as he can. Baba Yaga is in excruciating pain, but she tries not to cry out. This iron, where did it come from? Myrna gave it to me. She said it was a gift from her late husband. Oh, that's why. May I ask? Wait. First, tell me, can you reforge this chain? Baba Yaga struggles to stand. Well, yes, I did it once. I'm sure I can do it again, can but... Can you make me one long, continuous chain? One of many small connecting parts so that it can move like a whip? Uh, I've never done... Can you do it? Well, yes. I think I can. It will take some time. Tell me, how is Myrna? She is dead. I know. I carry the bones of her life in my body. Child. Not my choice. Believe me, there was nothing about this night that was my choice. She pulls her mother's cloak around her, hides her face with the hood. 
but I do have the choice to respond in kind. That choice is mine. Make me that chain. There are many ways to respond. Ooh, you are a kind man. Perhaps you simply do not understand. Baba Yaga exits. The sun begins to illuminate the village. Olgar follows her out. As he looks in the direction of her exit, he waves his hands across his eyes, and they clear. Forest. Day. Her mother's ashes? Yes. After the rape, Borvin and Previn killed Myrna with fire and force-fed her ashes to Baba Yaga. V storms off toward the cave. Wait, V. I wanted you to know this for a reason. Your great-aunt made a choice. A choice that now bears a heavy cost. I'm not saying it was wrong, but I know she would want you to choose a different fate. V turns back to Olgar, her face almost as red as her hair. She looks at him for a while, then continues to the cave. Olgar walks into the forest. Inside the cave, day. Baba! V hugs the back of the woman she thinks is Baba Yaga. Isabella turns around to face her. V steps back. V! Hugs her close. V! Oh my goodness, you don't know me. I'm Isabella. I'm your grandmother, V. Vasilisa was my daughter. You are my granddaughter. My grandmother? I haven't seen my grandmother since... Since you were too young to remember. This is no trick, V, I promise. Do you have a doll with you? A doll? You look just like your mother. Yes, my love, a doll. With red yarn in her hair, blue yarn for eyes, and a black and white checked apron that looks brand new. V takes the doll out of her pocket and embraces her grandmother. They hold each other tight. It's you. You came. Isabella pulls V away to look into her face. Are you well, Poppet? Are you all right? V hugs her close. Tears well up in her eyes. No one has called me Poppet since Mother died. Listen to me now. We have the rest of our lives to be together, thanks to your great aunt. But we must hurry. Grab your mother's cloak. We are needed elsewhere. Isabella blows black powder around them both, and they vanish. They reappear in the forest, near the hut on chicken legs. They cannot be seen from the hut. Seeing Baba Yaga at the gate to the hut, V starts towards her. Isabella grabs her and gently pulls her back amongst the trees. The Hut, Night The hut is in slow motion, carefully disassembling itself. Fingers that were locked start to dissolve. The chicken legs start to peel and scale until they cannot stand. The hut returns itself to the way it was when Baba Yaga was young. Only the gate and skulls remain intact. Baba Yaga, standing inside the gate, calls softly into the night, and the owl from her cave flies to her arm. With its sight regained, the owl turns its head in all directions. Baba Yaga scratches its white breast. How is our friend? Are you teaching Demetrius to hunt? The owl bows its head. Thank you. When it is done... You will bring him to Isavelia and V. They will care for him. They will care for you both. Egil, Borvin, and Prebin arrive. They stand on the other side of the gate. Baba Yaga regards them for a moment. So, the time has come. Baba Yaga lifts her left arm, forcing Prebin and Borvin to kneel. Watching from the grove, Isavelia keeps V close. Your spawn are getting too close now. It's always amazing that they find new comrades. No matter how many I kill, they find more. How easily a trap is laid by those devoted to the dark. I cannot forgive you. I am, however, too tired to despise you anymore. So I have found a new way. 
Borvin and Previn cannot speak or look away from Baba. I will release you from your contract to me, and I shall bind you to a new contract for me. You shall walk the earth, forever seeking out men who commit the heinous deeds that you yourselves have committed. Anywhere and everywhere they are, you will find them, and you will do everything you can to stop them, day and night. This will be your only purpose. You will not rest, and you will not die. You will be visible only to these men, men you know, men who know you. Your souls will be released, and all commitment to me will come to an end when there are none of your kind left. Understand me. The air around Baba Yaga turns like two tornadoes by her side. The skulls throw a more menacing light. Both huntsmen nod, almost imperceptibly. So be it. The two tornadoes absorb Previn and Borvin, carrying them away through the forest. Branches crack and snap. Ghostly sounds rise into a crescendo, and then suddenly... Silence. Egil can move. He jumps the fence to catch Baba Yaga as she falls. Baba! It's all right. I'm all right. Slowly, Baba Yaga rises to her feet. Egil gets on one knee and lowers his head. Do not release me from your service. I am not worthy. You are worthy. And I need you to do one last thing. Anything. You are not bound to me. You were never bound to me. It was my choice to change your speech. My choice. You are not accountable for what happened after. Your honor is intact. So now, with your own free will, I must ask you for one last thing. Anything, Baba. Isavelia and V are nearby. You will take them to a clifftop where Issa lives. You will prepare a pyre. No! Yes! You will. Please, Egil. This can only be done by someone who loves me. Someone I love. Oh, Baba. I know. I have always known. But it was not meant to be. Not this time. Not this time. Egil releases her. Isavelia and V walk out of the grove. When the four are united, Baba Yaga throws black powder around V, Isavelia, and Egil. They disappear into the night sky. Baba gives the hut one last look and vanishes. Seaside cliffs, pre-dawn. Egil prepares a pyre, not far from the cliff's edge. B and Isavelia bring pieces of driftwood to Egil. Are you sure, Grandmother? I'm sorry to say these are her specific instructions. But believe me, V, if there were any other way. A swirl of black powder rises and vanishes. Baba Yaga walks up to V and Isavelia. V goes to hug her. V, stop! You cannot touch her. You will continue your studies, V. Now that you are with your grandmother, you will not find a wiser and kinder teacher. I cannot promise your safety beyond this sunrise. You will need to be vigilant in your studies and practice. These are perilous times. Baba Yaga cocks her head to one side and looks long and hard at V. Egil takes out his bow and arrow, silently standing by. Our lessons have come to an end. Whatever I may have taught you is nothing compared to what you do for me now. You are brave and wise. Like your mother and grandmother, you are kind. More than that, you have extraordinary abilities passed down to you. You come from a long line of healers, sages, wise and ethical women 
who have chosen to live on the outskirts of humanity. Without us, humanity will surely perish. Everything you will become is not earned from the loss of their lives or mine or any of the other many, many women who have and will die. Work to protect and foster your gifts. All of us who have come before you will be with you, somehow, some way, if ever you need us. Baba Yaga turns toward Isabelia. Should anything go amiss, Igil will know what to do. Igil bends on one knee, striking two stones together until sparks ignite. He lights the kindling, and the blaze catches. V, hand me the doll. Slowly, V brings the doll out of her pocket and hands it to her grandmother. When I first made this doll, she had black hair like Baba. I must have made the doll for your great aunt even when I did not know who she was. This fabric, which has never aged, was from your great-grandmother, a simple black-and-white checked cloth. Isaveria hands the doll to Baba Yaga. Safe passage, sister. For a moment, the three of them form a loose circle. Baba Yaga addresses V. All that this doll was to you is in your heart, V. Continue the same careful attention, devotion, and wise practice. Stay away from the dark. It will always be looking for you. In a flash, Baba Yaga jumps into the fire. Isabelia holds V tight, turning her away from the blaze. Only Igil stands and stares into the fire. He breaks his bow and arrow in half. The blaze rises fast, before quickly sucking in on itself and extinguishing. Igil falls to his knees. The sun crests the sea, and the day begins. All that is left is a pile of dust, half black and half white. Egil rises and goes to his horse. He pulls a large abalone shell out of a burlap bag. He hands the shell to Isavalia and turns to mount his steed. Thank you, Egil, for the care you took to protect us for everything. Egil nods, but says nothing. He mounts his horse. V goes to his side. Egil, who knew what I was looking for before I did. The most honorable man I have ever met. You are forever welcome in my home, and you will always be in my heart. Thank you. Isavelia gathers all the ashes and scoops them into the abalone shell, holding V's hand. They walk to the edge of the cliff. Together, they toss the ashes toward the turbulent sea. Thousands of diamond-like sparkles fly toward the water, half black and half white. The surface of the ocean is illuminated with their light. Slowly, the sea absorbs them. The water ceases all turbulence and smooths to a glassy surface. Isabelia and V touch their forehead, lips, and heart with their right, then left hands, before bowing in gratitude. V turns to watch as Egil rides away. His form warps and vanishes into thin air. Isavalia and V gather their coats around them, link arms, and walk toward the village. Far off in the distance, the ringing of an iron bell can be heard. The end. Thank you for listening to Baba Yaga. A special thanks to all who participated in making the podcasts possible. I am so very grateful to everyone who generously and selflessly donated their talent and time. Baba Yaga was written to commemorate the many, many women who lost their livelihoods and lives, suffering terrible deaths for being branded a witch, and for the men who stood with and for them. 
without reading the very oldest of folk tales from around the world to my children when they were little, I might not have stumbled upon Vasilisa the Wise and begun the process of discovering a new truth within a very old folk tale. It is written in screenplay format as it has been a film I have been watching in my thoughts since before I ever put pen to paper. Perhaps now it is time to turn it into the film it is written to be. Sometimes life is not a fairy tale. Sometimes it is so much more.